Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to show you how to organize your binders and sustain that throughout the school year. So here are some benefits to binders and I want to emphasize that they're super customizable so you can do whatever you need to to satisfy your own personal needs. Um, and that's why I actually prefer binders to other organization methods. However, there are a couple of disadvantages and primarily they can take up a lot of space in your backpack, which can be a problem. And also they're super easy to get disorganized from like you'll see throughout this video. And also they can get pretty expensive if you take in, into consideration tab dividers. So my first tip is to find the perfect sized binder. So I personally like to use binders for every subject. So I usually use binders that vary from one inch to one and a half inch. And it's important to know that you shouldn't get binders that are in super big. But for me, like for classes like math, I use a lot of paper. So I have to get a one and a half inch binder. But for classes like English where we don't use paper that often, a one and a, a one or even half inch binder will do. So my second tip is to use tab dividers and these are going to be the key to your organization. So you can organize these however you like. Personally, I divide them based on each grading cycle. So my school has five grading cycles and each divider will be devoted to one grading cycle and I'll just store all my papers for that grading cycle there. However, there are so many different ways you can organize them. For instance, one tab, one divider could be for notes, another one could be for exams, another one could be for homework, and so on. So in my opinion, tab dividers are pretty expensive, so I like to reuse them and so I'll do that by putting tape on the tabs and I'll write down whatever I need to write down and then the next year that I use them I'll just peel off the tape and they're basically like brand new dividers. This next tip I need to emphasize a lot, but it is to not put anything in your pocket whatsoever because trust me when I say this, when you put one sheet of paper into that pocket, you are not going to stop. And I had this problem, at least in my math class, where I just kept putting, shoving all my papers into the pocket so I couldn't find any of the papers I actually needed. If you are to put something in your pocket, it would probably be your homework because the next class period you take your binder out, your homework is going to be right there in front of you and don't have to look through your entire binder to find it, but be sure to put it back into the corresponding section when you're done. So this next tip is to hole punch all of your papers immediately. Once you get a piece of paper, make sure to hole punch it and put it into the corresponding section. Again, I had this huge problem in my math class. I didn't hole punch any of my papers and I just stuck it in my pocket and I couldn't find anything. So trust me when I say hole punch all of your papers, it's going to help you a lot. So this next tip is to add necessary labels. So if you store your binders on a shelf, you may consider adding a label on the spine of your binder. However, for me, I only use my binders for school. So I just put labels or I put binder covers on the front of my binder because that's what, that's what suits my needs. But if something else suits your needs, you should totally do that. This last step is completely optional, but it is to make your binder aesthetic. For me personally, when I make things aesthetic, it is a motivation factor for me to keep it that way and to keep it organized. So I, I personally like to make things aesthetic, but if this is just, if this is not what you do, then don't do this. It's just a personal thing. So thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next week. Bye.